With the Ryzen 5000 series, AMD has basically made it very easy to overclock Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. And that's because they released the Curve Optimizer tool for overclocking. And this is part of their Precision Boost Overdrive tool set. And what it does is basically allow you to control the boost clocks of your CPU much more easily. And this is something that I really wanted while I was tuning my Ryzen 9 3900X before I jumped to Ryzen 5000 now. And currently I'm just borrowing a Ryzen 9 5900X from AMD who lent me this CPU to do videos on. And I thought it would be interesting to do a overclocking guide for the Ryzen 5000 series finally after I actually got my hands on one of them to test out myself. So what is Curve Optimizer? Lots of people got the misconception that Curve Optimizer, because of AMD calling it an undervolting tool and you can reduce the voltage using offsets and stuff, that it's actually undervolting and making your CPU cooler. But that's actually a mistake. What Curve Optimizer is, is basically give you a knob to control the voltage to frequency curve. And what that means is that this tuning using Curve Optimizer lets you change the voltage curve from the right or to the left and as in to the right for negative offset and to the left for a positive offset. And what this does is basically allow you to change the frequency your CPU runs at at a certain voltage point. So Curve Optimizer might be able to reduce power consumption by letting the CPU run at higher clock speeds at the same clock voltage, which means that to run at the same clock speed as before, it might not need as much voltage. So I guess it can kind of reduce power consumption in that way if it happens to find a certain circumstance that that applies to but it's not really an undervolting tool more of an overclocking tool that's more useful but yeah basically curve optimizer does not change the amount of voltage that your cpu is getting so it's not really an undervolting tool more like a frequency tuning tool that you can use for yourself to tune the boost clock behaviors on ryzen 5000 series cpus there's also the wrong misconception that adjusting the voltages individually per core using Curve Optimizer is actually changing the voltage per core on the CPU. But that's actually a mistake because it's physically impossible for Ryzen 5000 series CPUs to do this. They do not have an integrated voltage regulator inside the CPU itself. It only has a voltage regulator on the motherboard. So what the CPU can do is just request a voltage from the motherboard's VRM and then use that voltage in different areas of the chips by turning, in, by turning on or off different parts of the chip. It can't actually change the voltage that goes into each core of the CPU individually. So the point of the individual offsets per CPU core is not to adjust the voltages being applied per core, but you're actually sliding the voltage to frequency curve per core to allow higher or lower clock speeds at the same voltage that's being applied to the whole CPU core. You're not actually changing the voltage, but you're changing the clock speeds, if you get what I mean. You're changing the multiplier, not the voltage. So with that in mind, the best way to tune Curve Optimizer really depends if you have a dual CCD CPU or a single CCD CPU. Because on a dual CCD CPU, the first CCD is always the best CCD that will boost higher than the second CCD. With that in mind, the right way to tune Curve Optimizer actually depends on if you have a dual CCD CPU like the Ryzen 9 5950X and 5900X or a single CCD CPU like the Ryzen 5 5600X and the Ryzen 7 5800X. And the reason for that is because on the dual CCD CPUs, the first CCD is always the higher clocking part, which is usually higher leakage, which means that you can't actually add more negative offset on Curve Optimizer to get more clock speeds because it's already running at a, such a high clock speeds that you need exponentially more voltage, which you're not getting from the CPU. So you need to take account that you might need to use less offset on the first CCD cores than on the second CCD cores, which are more efficient and lower leakage parts most of the time. Now, the first thing to do before you tune Curve Optimizer is set the right power limits for PBO, because this is what dictates the maximum performance that you can get out of your CPU as well. Now, to do this, you need hardware info, which you can use to look up all the sensors in your PC, such as the clock speeds of the cores and the voltages, for example, and the temperatures as well as Ryzen Master to control the PBO settings in real time in Windows. Then you can use something to load the CPU, something like Cinebench, for example, which is a good load, which you can change the threads being used from low threads to high threads to test this out as well. 
Now to do this, you need to set the PPT to something high, like something like 250 watts for now, which is something that you'll probably never reach. And then you also set the TDC to something high, something like 250 amps again, something that you'll never reach. Then the tuning part actually comes on the EDC, which is what actually matters because PPT and TDC doesn't seem to do anything unless you hit them. Now for the EDC, you should set it to something conservative, something like 110 watts or 120 watts. And then you run Cinebench and you check the clock speeds on Hardware Info. And then you raise it up by steps of 10 amps on the EDC and then back it off once you see the clock speeds start dropping. Because in my experience, if you set the EDC too high, the clock speeds are actually lower than if you set the EDC. That's actually lower than what the CPU is trying to consume with a too high EDC. I don't know how this works, but apparently for my Ryzen 9 5900X, the best settings was 120 amps of EDC, which results in the highest clock speeds possible for the CPU. Your CPU might be different even though if you also have a 5900X, but a 120 amp EDC setting might be a good starting point for the Ryzen 9 CPUs. For the Ryzen 7 CPU and the Ryzen 5 CPUs, you might try a lower EDC or maybe it might be the same. I don't know, you gotta try and find the sweet spot that lets you the highest clock speeds by changing the EDC settings. Now you'll also probably see your CPU reaching really high temperatures in the 80 degrees or 90 degree range, depending on your cooling solution. In my case, I even have an NHD15S with 3000 RPM Noctua fans, and I'm still hitting 90 degrees on the 5900X in Cinebench, with just PBO enabled, and that's pretty normal, because Ryzen really just prioritizes clock speeds and just boosts as high as possible up to the limit of 90 degrees Celsius as well as staying within the limits of the PBO settings that you set. So this is completely safe and by design, and you should not worry about high temperatures, although if you have a better cooler, that just means that you have more headroom for the CPU to boost higher, and you'll just see it directly translate to higher clock speeds instead of a lower temperature. So do not worry about the temperature too much at this point. Now once that's done, you can start tuning the curve optimizer settings by changing it to per core settings. And then you can set a negative five unit offset for all the cores for now, if you, even if you have a dual CCD CPU. And this is a very conservative offset that should run on basically almost every CPU. And then you can try running Cinebench again in both the multi-core setting and the single threaded settings, the single core and multi-core tests, and see if your CPU does not crash. Then if it doesn't crash, you can try increasing the negative offset by five more units and see if it crashes in Cinebench once you test the multi-core and single-core tests again. And if it doesn't, then just repeat it until you find a crash. Then if it crashes, just back off by 5 units in the negative offset, then try running it again and see if it doesn't crash. If it doesn't crash, then that's great. For the single CCD CPU users, like the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs, you're actually 90% there on getting the most out of your CPU. The most that you can do now is actually just tuning the per-core negative offset. You can do this by increasing the negative offset per core one by one. So you can try core zero increasing by one more unit and trying Cinebench in both multi-core and single core again and see if it crashes. Then just continue increasing it until that core is maximized, then you move on to the next core. And once that's done, then well, you maximize your Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU with a single CCD. Now for the dual CCD CPU users, the next step is actually to try increasing the negative offset on the second CCD. Now this might sound weird because I told you guys that the first CCD is the better one that can clock higher. But that's exactly why you can't really increase the negative offset on the first CCD more than the second one because the first CCD is already boosting so high, increasing the offset or moving the voltage to frequency curve more to the right is just going to increase the clock speeds too much and it'll be unstable because of the inherent architecture that's not being able to run that high. So you should increase the negative offset on the second CCD and find the maximum for all the cores there by increasing all six or eight cores at the same time until you find the maximum negative offset. Most of the time you'll find that the second CCD can achieve more than five or ten units extra than the first CCD in terms of negative offset. But yeah, once you've done that, you're basically 90% there on maximizing your dual CCD Ryzen 9 CPUs. The only thing you can do now is the same as on the single CCD CPU users, which is maximize the per core negative offset, which is, to be honest, quite tedious on a 12 core or a 16 core CPU to do each core one by one. 
but hey, that's what you have to do if you want to maximize your CPU. But yeah, that's about it. Just increase the negative offset per core until you find the maximum for each of the cores by just running Cinebench. Now at this point, all the stress tests that we've been doing is just Cinebench runs in multi-core and single core mode. Now if you want to test for actual stability, you might want to try varying the thread count usage in the multi-core test to vary the CPU usage to something that you typically use on the daily usage because this might boost the CPU at different levels which might or might not be stable. But really using Cinebench is just a rough way to see if your CPU is stable. The real stability test for Ryzen is actually just by daily using it because Ryzen makes it really difficult to stress test especially because it boosts to different clock speeds on different cores depending on the kinds of workloads you're encountering. So the applications that you use every day is probably really different than what Cinebench stresses the CPU. So you just have to daily it and see if it crash. And most likely you'll see a crash on your CPU. And if it does happen, then the best way to get more stability is just reduce the offset across all the cores by one unit and use it again and see if it still crashes in your daily usage. If it does crash again, unfortunately, you have to reduce the offset again by one unit on all the cores. Obviously, you can try to pinpoint the crashing core and the amount of offset that's too much for that particular core, but that's really just too much work, especially on a 12 or 16 core dual CCD CPU. So yes, I guess you can try to pinpoint the crashing core and find the offset that's too high for that particular core and reduce that in accordingly. But that's gonna be way too tedious to find that one particular core that's causing the crash for a 12 core or 16 core CPU particularly. So I would just suggest you guys to just reduce all the cores by one unit, just the whole core on the CPU, instead of just pinpointing it, trying to find one single core that's causing the issue because that's just gonna take way too much time. But hey, I guess if you have time to spare, you can do that to really maximize the gains that's gainable on your Ryzen CPU. But yeah, that's about it for this uh, overclocking tutorial. It's really pretty simple to overclock Ryzen 5000 CPUs with Curve Optimizer and PBO. AMD has made it really easy because especially this is a really safe method. There's almost no way to break your CPU because you're not changing the voltage that's being applied to your CPU. You're just changing the clock speeds that the CPU is boosting to. So there's almost zero chance of damaging your CPU or actually I could say zero chance of doing that. It still has all the thermal protection and the overcurrent protection as well as reducing the voltage during idle just as a stock CPU except it just boosts a bit higher. So there's almost zero, zero downside to doing this and just benefit except for of course you're going to use a bit more power and your rig might be hotter and a bit more noisy. But that's what you get when you want to push your CPU to the limits. So what are the actual gains once you've done this? Well, on the 5900X, that's a dual CCD CPU that I'm testing out right now, you can see that from the stock speeds, I've gained quite a bit of clock speeds, now reaching just under 4.6 GHz across all cores in Cinebench, and as well as on the single core, I've gained quite a bit more boost clock as well, reaching 4.95 GHz at the peak, and sustaining 4.9 GHz at least on the single threaded workloads just indefinitely. So. It's quite a nice gain in terms of performance, and if you see that the multi-core and single-core clocks are increased, then obviously the clock speeds in the partial load in between full load and only like one core being used will be increased as well in terms of clock speed. So you'll see very nice gains across the applications that you use, and even in games might be, you might see some gains because you're getting a bit higher clock speeds. So this is a really nice way to get more performance out of your Ryzen CPUs basically for free and it's not really that difficult especially if you already have a nice motherboard and a nice CPU cooler. I don't see any reason why no one should not do this. Anyways that's it for this video I hope you find this overclocking guide interesting and useful and if you do maybe leave a like and maybe comment down below on what kind of performance gain you got on your Ryzen 5000 CPU and maybe click subscribe to see more interesting videos like this and other reviews and unboxings as well. Thanks for watching.